Hello, loved ones. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2022. We thank God for this opportunity to continue to serve Him and to serve mankind as best we can according to His will. Each New Year, we traditionally, uh, as people, uh, look for new things to do, new ways of doing things, uh, to bring freshness, and excitement, and enthusiasm. But in reality, God wants us to perfect what He has already given us. So as we embark upon 2022, let's take a look at our individual ministries, ministries that we are a part of collectively, and let's see how we can really, really, really glorify God, honor God with our ministry work, with our worship, with our love, with our study, with our prayer lives, with our very lives. It's a good time to to get serious about who we are. Let's not look one way to one group and another to another group. Let's come together and be consistent in who we are. I look forward to continuing to grow in the Lord. I look forward to us growing together in the Lord. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your walk with the Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of your walk with the Lord. I'm overjoyed about what God is doing and what He will continue to do. I'm grateful that He's keeping us safe. I'm grateful that He's working with us in a way that keeps us close and genuinely loving one another. May God strengthen you. May God bless you. May God speak to you in your spirit as we enter into a new calendar year for us. But really, it's just another blessed day from the Lord. God, we thank you today for this day. Thank you for another year. Bless each of us, your children. Bless us in our going out and our coming in. Cover us, O Heavenly Father, with your grace. And put a smile on our hearts, God, that we may reflect you as we come in contact with others. We love you, Father. We love you. We love you. We love you. Thank you for the presence of your spirit, sacrifice of your son. In Jesus' name. scripture this morning will be coming from Philippians, the second chapter, verses 5 through 11. And it reads, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. 
And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Elijah Lock, shout, shout. Elijah Lock, come in up, Lord. Elijah Lock, shout, shout. Elijah Lock, come in up, Lord. Elijah Lock, shout, shout. Elijah Lock, come in up, Lord. Elijah Lock, shout, shout. Elijah Lock, come in up, Lord. Satan's alive in the country of the If you don't watch out, he'll conjure you. If I could, I surely would stand on the rock where Moses stood. Elijah, Elijah, look, shout, shout, Elijah, Elijah, look, call me a stone. Elijah, look, shout, shout, Elijah, Elijah, look, call me a stone. Elijah, look, Elijah, look, Elijah. Elijah Rock, Elijah Rock, 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 Elijah. Elijah Rock, come in up, Lord. Elijah Rock, shout, shout, Elijah. Elijah Rock, come in up, Lord. Elijah Rock, Elijah Rock. Let us pray. Our Father, we come at this time thanking you for another day that you've given to us. We thank you, Father, for allowing our eyes to open this morning and see this, another brand new day that you've given to us. Father, we thank you for the rest you gave to us last night. You kept us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. You allowed us to sleep and get a good night's sleep and early woke us this morning that we may see this again, a brand new day. Father, we thank you for everything that you're providing for us. Forgive us right now for all of our sins and trespasses, uh, those by thought, those by word, those by deeds things that we've done as well as things that we left undone. So Father, we ask right now you just cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. Help us, Father, as we continue throughout this day. Father, we thank you for the year of 2021 that you brought us through. Uh, you blessed us in many, many ways. You just kept us and provided all that we needed. And Father, we thank you for it. Now, Father, as we uh, go into 2022, we just ask that you would just continue to guide and direct us and continue to use us to your glory. Use us to your glory in all that we do, Father. We thank you. Continue to bless our families, bless our church family, bless our pastor. Continue to give him wisdom and knowledge to continue to lead us the way you'd have us to be led. Bless all of our ministers. Just bless them and bless their ministries. Continue to bless every deacon, Father. Just bless us, enable us to be those servants that you would have for us to be. Oh, Father, we pray for all the sick, all the shut-in, all the bereaved. You know each and every one, Father. Those that are in hospitals, those that are in nursing homes, those that are at their, uh, at their own homes, Father. Oh, Father, just bless them with the blessings that they stand in need of. Father, again, every family of St. Stephen's, just bless them in a mighty way. Keep them in your care. Not only St. Stephen's, but every church that stands open in your name, Father. Just bless those congregations with the blessings that they stand in need of. Father, we come praying for our world situation. We pray for our world leaders. Oh, Father, just bless them to uh, turn from their wicked ways, Father, and turn to you. Help them to allow you to guide and direct them and show them how they should go and what they should do. 
Bless them with wisdom and knowledge, Father. We pray especially for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and all of our uh, uh, leaders here in America, Father. Just bless them with the blessing they stand in need of. Oh, Father, all of our legislators, all of our senators, all of our representatives, oh, Father, those that are in high positions, Father, oh, Father, just give them wisdom that they may do those things that you have for them to do. Every mayor, Father, every governor, just bless them, Father. Give them wisdom. Give them knowledge. Oh, Father, those that are opposed to you, Father, we pray for them that you would have mercy on them, that you would turn them around before it's everlasting too late. Oh, Father, we pray for Donald Trump and, 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 and his salvation. We pray that you would save him, Father, save him from his sin. Oh, Father, just continue to bless the whole world situation again. Oh, Father, there are many needs that are out there, but you can meet every one. Oh, Father, just continue now just to bless us as we continue throughout this day and as we continue throughout this uh, week, this month, and continue out this year. Just bless us and keep us. Help us, oh, Father, just to continue to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Father, again, we thank you for everything. Bless us now and keep us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
Let us pray. Father, we thank you today for the chance to come before you, Lord, with petitions, with concerns, with joy, Lord, for an opportunity just to commune with you. Father, as your children, we recognize that we lack perfection, God, within ourselves. So we lift ourselves up to you, asking for forgiveness, asking for a cleansing of sin, Heavenly Father, cleansing of our minds, cleansing of our spirits, cleansing of our hearts, God. Forgive us of our sins, God. Strengthen us, Heavenly Father, that we don't return to the very things that we've done in the past. Help us, God, to hear your word and your will through your spirit, Lord. Help us to be guided by your spirit. Help us to be moved by your spirit. Help us to be motivated by your spirit, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for illness, Heavenly Father. I pray, oh God, your healing touch. I pray, Heavenly Father, for procedures. I pray your healing touch. I pray, Heavenly Father, for recovery, rehabilitation. I pray your healing touch. I pray, Lord, for those that have been suffering for a long time. I pray relief, God. I pray sustainment, God. I pray through all the things that we go, God, through that our faith do not fail us, Heavenly Father. I pray for the caregivers providing uh, service to their loved ones, Father, both in the home and those that are working uh, in medical facilities to provide care for us. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the mindset of mankind that you would help us, God, to look to each other and to love each other and to respect one another and to care about one another and to help one another and to lift one another, Lord. Let brotherly love abide, God. Help us to connect one with another, Lord, that we can change the world, Father. I pray that more know you, God, in the pardon of their sins. I pray, Father, that we have 
enough people recognizing that I cannot do it on my own. I need uh, one greater than I am, Father, and help us to be able to introduce Jesus, your darling son, to them, Lord. Help them to feel the indwelling of your spirit, God, and the movement of your power from within, God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for our incarcerated loved ones, God. Keep their minds, their bodies, their souls. Keep them safe, Heavenly Father. Keep them strengthened. Lord, keep them close to you. Help them, Lord, to turn to you. All of us, Lord, are imperfect. But God, we are all able, Heavenly Father, to come to you while we have a chance, Lord, on this side. Father, I pray for all of those, uh, Lord, that are wondering, what do I do next? What is my next step in life? Where do I go from here? God, I pray for direction, Lord. I pray for opportunities, Lord. I pray for doors to be open, Lord, that your loved ones don't have to worry, that your loved ones don't have to wait, that your loved ones don't have to wonder, God, where it's going to happen and how it's going to happen. Father, we know that you are able to make it happen. So, Father, if it will be your will, I pray, oh God, that you would open the doors that need to be opened, that, that you would strengthen, Heavenly Father, our faith walk as you guide us along Along this path, Lord, and provide the provisions, God, that you need to provide, Heavenly Father, that your children may be fed, that your children may be clothed, that your children may have shelter, that your children may have comfort, Lord, in knowing that you have provided, Father. Thank you, Lord, for watching over us. Thank you, Lord, for every church opening your name, God. I pray that your word goes out today and does not return void. I pray that your word penetrates the heart of man. I pray pray that your word, Lord, is the difference maker today. It's not about anything else, God, but it is about you, Father. So we pray that you get the glory today, God, that you get the honor today, God, that when we are done today, we know we will have been in your presence, O oh, Heavenly Father, and that we can remain in that presence. Even when we're not connected with one another, we're always connected with you. So Father, move as only you can, Lord. Have your way in this worship experience. Have your way, God. Have your way, have your way. Thank you for this day and every day that you give us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your comfort. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for your almighty power, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for you. Thank you for you, Heavenly Father. Bless us and keep us, Lord. In the marvelous name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and glory to your name. Thank you. Such a wonderful Savior to 
to be born in a manger so that I can share his favor and my heart be made anew. Listen to the trumpets shouting through the darkness. To be born in a manger So that I can share his favor And my heart be made anew Listen to the trumpets Shouting through the darkness Crying holy, holy the night that Christ was born, the night that Christ was born, the night that Christ was born. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for Lord, the opportunity to share your word with your people, Father. We pray that your people are blessed, even now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our scripture today is found in the prophecy of Zephaniah. Our scripture is found in the prophecy of Zephaniah, chapter 3. Verses 16 and 17, New King James Version reads, In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, Zion, let not your hands be weak. The Lord your God, in your midst, the Mighty One, will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Our thought for today, solutions for God's people. Solutions for God's people. In this season, uh, the beginning of a new year, we often focus on Reflection, soul searching, and decision making about the way ahead in our lives. Prayerfully, all of us can look at ourselves and see some spiritual growth over this past year. Also, prayerfully, we have a desire to do any, even more. We have a desire and a fire to continue to grow in the Lord, to, to continue to work for the Lord, to work in his kingdom with even more urgency, more joy, with more, more connection with the Lord as guided by the Holy Spirit. Yes, this is a season of reflection, soul searching, and decision making concerning the way ahead. Zephaniah, our prophet today, begins uh, this third chapter warning Jerusalem that if God punishes the ungodly, he, he will not spare his chosen that are hard-nosed sinners refusing to take a look at themselves and try to right their wrongs. So Zephaniah is warning that, that, that as Jerusalem moves forward, they need to take a strong look at themselves, a spiritual examination of the man or the woman in the mirror 
and turn from their wicked ways. There need to be some repentance and some writing of the ship. Because when that happens, uh, it triggers other things that we will speak about as we walk through today's sharing. Uh, he, Zephaniah then begins to speak about the remnant uh, as we move through this chapter. The remnant of the righteous that remains still intact. Uh, this remnant rejects wrongdoing. They, they refuse to, to follow the crowd. They, they refuse to bow down to the ways of the world. Uh, no matter how popular or in their face wrong is, they still choose right. And Zephaniah is led by God to remind us that we ought to work hard to be a part of that remnant because it is through that remnant that God issues out blessings and directions for all of mankind. Uh, God shall show forth his faithfulness to this remnant. So thank God, thank God for the remnant. It doesn't have to be a, a big crowd all the time. But those that are gathered, whether big or small in number, ought to be focused on the Lord and his will. Ought to be connected with the Lord in such a way that, that whatever they do, God gets the glory. Are you working for the Lord today? Are you looking for the pat on the back? Or are you doing what you do to the glory of God? Amen, somebody. It, it ought to be time now as we grow in God that we ought to ensure that God gets the glory and not we uh, ourselves. We ought to, first of all, act like a believer. Yes, as I look at this 16th verse, it helps me to appreciate that believers ought to act like believers. Uh, Zephaniah says here, Jerusalem, do not fear. Do not let your hand be weak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, 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 don't fear uh, is, is, is so powerful in what God is saying. God, God is speaking through Zephaniah of a deep spiritual joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, 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 not some limited uh, situational Fear. That's not what he's talking about here. But he's this deep spiritual joy uh, is about embracing the power and the presence of God within. Uh, embracing the spirit of God within you. Yes, 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 yes. I like the way Isaiah connects with this text. Uh, he he labels uh, this this fear situation as Hepzibah and land of Beulah. Uh, he says it this way in Isaiah 64 and 4. You shall no longer be termed forsaken, nor shall your land any more be termed desolate, but you shall be called Hephzibah and your land Beulah. For the Lord delights in you and your land shall be married. You see how, how, how Isaiah unpacks this thing and helps us to see what, what Zephaniah is also saying. When there is a remnant, if you just hold out and hold on, the solution to your problem is on the way. There is a solution for God's people and God will clearly show it to us. Hallelujah. All you have to do is remain faithful in the one who is Faithful over all things. Jeremiah got in on it also. Jeremiah labeled this same atmosphere as Jehovah Sidkenu. That is Lord our righteous. He says in Jeremiah 33, 16. In those days Judah will be saved. And Jerusalem will dwell safely. And this is the name by which she shall be called Lord our righteousness. Thanks be to God that you can have joy 
in an unjoyful situation. Thanks be to God, we can have hope in a hopeless situation. Why? Because we know the solution is already present. God has already given us a solution to what we face. As you reflect today, as you search today, and as you decide today, deep in your heart and deep in your spirit, embrace hope in the Lord. Whatever you do, do not give up on God, for God does not give up on you. Find, find joy in him, even when it is lacking in you. You may be in a pity party for yourself, but God is saying to you here that I see your righteousness and I am going to bless you for your righteousness. Not only you, but when you are righteous, it is going to cause the move of God over all of his people, that all of his people may receive the same blessing just because there was a remnant willing to hold on and do the right thing. We ought to act like believers. To act like a believer is to live knowing that God will. To act like a believer is to, to believe and live like God can. To act like a believer is to believe and to know that God is, he is the great I am. So what is your solution? Is it obvious? If it's not obvious by now, your solution is God. We don't need anything else. The solution for God's people is God himself. Thanks be to God, the author and finisher of our faith. He is the one that covers everything we need. So we must act like believers. Secondly, we ought to know that God is with you. Know that God is with you. As I look at Verse 17, I see here, he says, the Lord your God in your midst. Thank you, Zephaniah. The Lord your God in your midst. The Lord your God is nothing like God being present in your present situation. Isn't this something to, as you go through what you're going through, if you would just pause for a moment and remember that God is right there with you, you don't have to ask him to stop by uh, where you are. You don't have to have to ask him to meet you where you are. God is already there. And he's not just any God. He is the mighty one. The text says he is the mighty one. The mighty one here is written to show you that he is able and capable to fulfill what followed the mighty one. What does the mighty one do? He will save you. You don't have to wonder, are you savable? Or uh, maybe God won't do it. The Bible says here, he will save you. That is beyond possibility. And that is nestled in execution. You don't have to worry about what God can do. You can rejoice in what God is doing. You will be saved. The chosen in context is consistently spoken of in the feminine as a bride for God, the husband man. We saw that in Isaiah. He said that it would be married to Beulah land. Yeah, 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 yeah. So God sets this thing up and in a way that we can appreciate in a relationship. Amen. A relationship what God has put together, let no man set asunder. Look, that applies to the marriage, the spiritual marriage between us and God because you cannot break what the Holy Spirit is doing. Thank you, Lord. The enemy cannot come between you and God. Amen. The devil himself has no space nor place between you and God. The colorful yet complete union of marriage helps to paint the picture of God's unfailing and ever-present love with the righteous. God is always with you. Look, Isaiah got in on it again. He got in on it again. Isaiah 62 and 5 says, For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom, bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Lord have mercy. So shall your God rejoice over you. Jeremiah, not to be slighted, 
got in on it in Jeremiah 32 and 41. He said, yes, I will rejoice over them to do them good. And I will assur assuredly, surely plant them in this land with all my heart and with all of my soul. Now, Hosea, the one who had to have an experience unique unto himself, that prophet got a piece of it too. In Hosea 2.19, he said, I will betroth you to me forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice, in loving kindness and mercy. What are you saying, Reverend? I am telling you today that God loves you so much that nobody can separate you from his love. And that is the solution for God's people. God's love is so powerful that it conquers everything we face. So as you go through this new year, trying to figure it out, trying to work it out, don't you ever forget that nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Act like a believer. And secondly, know that God is with you. And finally, my brothers and sisters, can I tell you, we ought to celebrate with the Lord. We ought to celebrate with the Lord. We got to learn to celebrate with God. So often we do things for God. We got to learn to celebrate with God. We act like God does not celebrate. We act like God does not rejoice. We act like God does not get his shout and his praise on. God will rejoice over you with gladness, says the text. This is an emotional expression of God's satisfaction. Thank you, Lord. God will quiet you with his love. Look, his love is able to go, shh. Have you ever understood how when you're in love, it doesn't take words sometimes? You can be in the presence of your loved one and just quietly know it. And before you know it, a hand will ease out or a smile will show, show up on your face because you, you say it all in your expressions and not in your words. God will rejoice over you with singing. Now, if God can get his praise on over you, surely you ought to get your praise on over him. Uh, uh, singing is an outward expression of a relationship that is full of approval. God is letting us know by singing over us that he approves the relationship that he is in with us. And my brothers and sisters, if that's not solution enough for you, what more and more do you need? He already sent his son, Christ Jesus, who hung, bled, and died on Calvary. That's what love did. Amen. Went into a borrowed tomb. Got up early on the third day. Amen. As proclaimed, all power is in my hands. And he says, I got to go so your helper can go, so can come, so your comforter can come. And so Jesus elevated out of the flesh, but he sent spirit to be with us continually because he said, I, I will be with you always. And he's still with us. Holy Spirit walks with me, talks with me, dwells in me, strengthens me, covers me, comforts me, guides me. What more do you need? The solution for God's people is God himself. So as we reflect, as we search, as we make decisions, remember to act like the believer that you are, to know that God is with you. And thirdly, to celebrate with God, not just for God, because he is your answer. He is your solution. Church, we've come together and worship today. We pray that you have been blessed just having been with the St. Stephen's family on today. We pray that something has been said or done that will make a difference in your life today, tomorrow, until Jesus comes back. Now we pray that, that you know the Lord for yourself, that you have accepted him for yourself. There is an open invitation to every person who walks this earth to know Jesus for yourself. We are always willing to share him with you. 
And if you are a part of the body of believers, we are always overjoyed to rejoice with you and encourage you in the word. God bless you. Be encouraged today.